Gearbox today sees us looking at the Roland VC30 HD video converter. John. This is a really interesting device. It's sort of a Swiss army knife of converting video into a format that you can use for both recording and distribution in one go. So the first thing you notice is it's got a firewire and a USB output on the back. The signal is forked into the two places you want it to go, out to the web via firewire, out to USB back to a machine that you can use to control this. And there's a lot you can do from your PC or Mac to control this device. First thing you notice when you pick it up, and I, I just thought this was wonderful uh, as an engineer, it's got the diagram on the top of the box. It tells you exactly what it does. And that, of course, would lead you to go and look at some of the menus you might use to control things. So for example, there's an audio delay built in. If you discover that your audio is not matching the video, like that, yeah, you can delay. We, we joke about this all the time. You can change the delay until it is exactly schmick. And of course, you, you can even do that test with somebody at the far end. If there's some arbitrary delay that's happening, you, you could just pre um, uh, pre convert the the audio delay just to match so that it, it looks right at the other end. Even taking into into account gear at the at the other end. Hmm. There's a, a few things I really like about this, John. Um, I really like that that you you've got a wide range of inputs. You can go composite, mm. S video, component, HDMI, or standard in fact, connectors. DVI, and it's got BNC connectors. There's yeah. no there's no um, there's no nonsense RCA for video. Mm. Um, but wait, I hear you say, what about the RCA for audio? Yes, it's true, there are RCA audio connectors. But if we look on the back, we also find XLRs. And you can switch either between front and rear panel. Um, and, and, then, and then thoughtfully, the XLRs can be switched in two modes. Yeah, yeah, you can either run analog left and right, or you can run AES on one channel and time code on the other. So it's pretty much everything that you would want to get from your source to the other end is available uh, directly um, into the box without uh, without mucking around. And straight, straight out of the box, there, there's there's a lot to like about this in terms of usability as well. Mm. Straight out of the box, um, you can plug your sources in, use the little front panel buttons, you just press and hold to change your video input or your audio input and your mm. output format and so on. And um, so you, you might look you at don't it, absolutely you need might, a PC. No, or you Mac. might look at it and think, oh, that's the extent of the operation. Wow, that's pretty simple. But then you get into the, the software which runs via USB mm. and that gives you a lot more control. You can adjust your frame delays and so on. Um, for audio, you can adjust your video parameters. Um, and also you can adjust what your actual output format is doing. Mm. Uh, something that I really liked about this is that e even straight out of the website, the support that Roland has provided is really good and really informative. So uh, it will tell you straight away what formats it will handle. It, it will basically handle anything up to 25 megabits a second coded. So it will do 1080i straight out of the box. It will do 1080p, but it won't do that at full rate. It will, however, do 1080p at film rates, at, uh, at the 24 frames a second. Below that, it will do 720p, and, and pretty much anything else you can throw at it in MPEG-2 in, uh, or in HD or in, in DV. Mm. The reality is that, look, pretty, pretty much any format that 95% of users are going to yeah. want is catered to. Mm. But wait, you're going to ask these questions, what does doesn't it do? And again, thoughtfully, Roland has provided a one-pager where they've gone and tested the device with some of the more common pieces of software that you might connect it to. So for example, if you're using uh, Ustream or Telestream or Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder, they've done some of the hard work for you so you don't pull this out of the box expecting it to do something and discover, oh, hang on, it doesn't interoperate. They've actually taken some responsibility and all credit to, to Roland for calling that out. Yeah, they've also got some quite good application diagrams. Speaking of that, John, applications, suggestions? Um, well, certainly for live streaming from a live gig. So if, if you're doing a corporate or something else where you want to send the message out to the web, uh, this is a really great device. And of course, you get the, get the confidence of being able to monitor it at the same time as it's uh, as it's going out. Uh, and, and indeed, to you it. can record it at the same time yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Semi-professional, look, there are, there are all kinds of things this is going to do. You, you might even just use this to pick up the audio and do audio coding and spit that out. Nothing more than that. It would still be an excellent box to have there. And I mean, how big is that? 
you can put that in the that backpack fit, and take it with you. That fits in a little pelican case yeah, quite easily. no problem whatsoever. It's a, it's a great little device. Mm. External power supply, but they, again, there is thoughtfully the, the cord retention clip there, so it's not going to come unplugged as long as you actually bother to apply yeah, they, the Yeah, they've pitched it at clip. professional users, yeah. and then they've built it accordingly, and it's, it's not made of plastic. This is going to fall down a flight of stairs and still work. Yeah. John, overall impressions? Overall impression, uh, a really good little thing that um, I'm going to sneak off and put in my kit bag. Nice.